ever since I did my first video on old gods of Appalachia, I put it on my shelf right there, hoping that at some point in time, somebody wants to play it with me. But it keeps calling my name, and I end up taking it from my shelf, reading and rereading parts of it constantly, making it the most intriguing RPG I have in my possession. Hi there fellow roleplayers and game masters, I'm Mr. Tarask and I am possessed by old gods of Appalachia. And I'm not even talking about the RPG alone, I'm also talking about the podcast. Yes, in my first Appalachia video I said I never listened to podcasts and up until... A few weeks ago, I didn't. I tried a million podcasts, but it never works for me and for some reason or another. Old Gods of Appalachia, I felt that I had to at least give it a try after my review, so I put it on and it is keeping me occupied. It is in my head, I cannot stop listening to it. Now, I'm only just a few episodes in, so I'm, I am in no way, shape or form a lore master or know-it-all about Appalachia, the RPG, the Old Gods of Appalachia RPG, but I know I absolutely love it. The quality of the podcast is just insane and the quality of this book is also incredibly insane, but there is a shit ton to talk about here, so I decided instead of giving you like one very long video going over the book and all of that stuff i wanted to split this up into a few videos with digestible and understandable bits about old gods of appalachia and first i want to talk about the region the customs the people and of course your first adventure now quick disclaimer especially for the people who are already fans of old gods of appalachia the rpg or the podcast i'm going to simplify some things that is not to be disrespectful to the source material that is purely to give people an id and a sense of what it is and then for them to discover for themselves what lies deep within. So first things first, I want to talk a little bit about the Appalachian region and why I think it is extremely interesting to have an RPG in the early 1900s set in that region. If this uh, Appalachian word rings a bell for you, that is because it is a real region. So a lot of people are watching from the United States and they're like, duh, it is a real region. But some people do not know that it is a region in the United States in the east northeast part or whatever it goes a little bit into canada if i'm not mistaken and it is a mountainous region they call appalachia it is one of the oldest mountainous regions in the world in the real world uh together with a lot of people compare it to the uh dark forest of germany that i live kind of close by to especially in this kind of like the same type of dark forest going on there's mountainous areas going on there there isn't anything special in a sense of there is not like the highest mountain or the deepest valley or whatever it is just a dark uh, forest with a lot of little towns especially in the early 1900s people used to live there in very uh, closed off societies communities uh, with like these typical villages you see in movies with like one wooden church and a couple of houses and one road and there is one blacksmith and there is one baker and there's a few fields that everybody works on or there are these little towns that are actually owned by a company a mining company for example who builds houses for the people who work there who who has everybody who works there works in the mine and, and people who don't work in the mine work outside of the mine but they all work for the same company that kind of stuff but the real Appalachian region has a very very cool uh I want to say bit of history and lore and it's, some of it is really weird some of it is, is downright just just really bad but a lot of it is really cool as an inspiration for an rpg and that is why i think this is a really cool rpg and a really, really cool region because i'm naturally not drawn to playing rpgs in dark versions of real places like for example a lot of people like to play rpgs in the historical london adding some magic to it but i personally don't really like that because for me personally that region although it has a rich history and, and dark history and grim history for me it doesn't speak to me to to have that rpg thing going on there while the appalachian region for me absolutely does and another really cool thing about this is this is the dark version about of the appalachian region in the real region places are a little bit different um some borders are different some of the mountains are different so they do that on purpose I, 
even like historical events that happened in and around the Appalachian region, they kind of moved them around in order to tell a cooler story. So this is a dark version of it. But even if you are looking at the real uh, uh, world version of it, it, it has a lot of really creepy stories because the, the dark mountains have like a lot of abandoned buildings and castles and, and, and a lot of like old railroads and really spooky stuff going on that there is a bunch of stories about like haunted mansions uh there's a lot of like old mines that people say uh, uh dark creatures live there and they mined there and they awakened dark creatures and all of that is great inspiration for the rpg so even if you're a game master looking for an, uh, for an original story to tell in this rpg world you can look at the real life stuff uh a lot about witchcraft um witch burnings there is a lot of, was a lot of slavery there was a lot of like white versus black type stuff going on and uh that is why the appalachian region the dark version of it is really uh, really really cool in my opinion now it is really easy to get overwhelmed by the region because the region is very very large and the book goes very deep into that region and splits it up into uh, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia and West Virginia and then zooms more into the towns and the cities and the peoples and places of interest and all of that stuff. Another thing to get overwhelmed by is the amount of different types of stories you can tell within Old Gods of Appalachia within the Appalachian region especially the dark region that the RPG G is set in because it talks about witchcraft and witches doing crazy things and um, the spells that people can cause. They talk about old ancient beings, gods, so to speak, living underneath the mountains of Appalachia. And every now and then they spawn weird creatures that come crawling out of the ground or out of like the mines and stuff and start devouring or or taking over people who then and then tur in their turn do crazy stuff. They talk about normal plants and normal creatures suddenly acting really weird. They talk about people r getting risen from the death and all of that stuff. And there's much, much, much more. There's haunted houses, haunted cats all of that stuff so it's really hard to pinpoint one thing that you want to do as a game master and that you want to run with so the easiest way that i recommend for starting in uh, the appalachian region of old gods of appalachia is by playing the uh, starting adventure so part six in the big book has two adventures the first one is called the luthiers uh, luthiers folly and the other one is what paths may cross so the luth Thier's Folly is written especially for newer game masters and uh, sorry for newer game master and newer players not spent not essentially to like the cypher system or to like any rpg in general but to this setting because it really zooms into like one one town one town like this one for example there is this one church there's a few buildings some bigger than others there's some stone buildings some wooden buildings there's probably a back blacksmith and all of that stuff and the thing that i like about this it is quite straightforward at the same time the players can choose how they end up um uh how they end up like dealing with the problem at hand and it really zooms into like one place which get it gives the players a great chance to um not only get to know like the vibe of the of the uh, setting without like being overwhelmed by the setting but also it is something the book talks about um they also like can use this one town and like people from one town and like the NPCs from one town in order to fall back on uh, so they don't get overwhelmed by all of the uh, extra creatures, extra NPCs and all of that stuff. And essentially, it is, this is really crazy. It's really crazy. So it starts out with one of the coolest scenes that I've ever read in an RPG. There is this town dance in like a bigger house or a bigger, I don't know, the, whatever. There is this dance inside and there is live music playing. And there are some um, uh, live musicians playing. Probably one is playing an upright bass and the other one is hitting a drum. And the other one is playing a violin and maybe there's a guitar there, whatever you want to fill it in. And then suddenly one musician starts playing a tune nobody ever heard a beautiful nice tune nobody has ever heard but as soon as she does 
other musician star joining in. The first, at first glance, they're like, what are you doing? And then suddenly they, they also now know suddenly how to play this tune. And they start joining in and, and then the bass drops in and then the drummer starts hitting the rhythm and all that stuff. And this is really cool because you can play this out, right? Because you can really tell a story here. There's this dance to beautiful people. There's food, there's snacks, there's drinks. There's, there's cool live music. People are dancing and then suddenly this new co uh, tune comes in. But as long as the... Um, musicians are playing they are getting older really quickly there are like their skin is like wrinkling and they're you know, fading away and then somebody stops it or whatever happens and then it is up to the players to investigate what actually happened now there was a traveling luthier in the city uh or luthier if that's the correct way to pronounce it is a person who restrings instruments and he restrings restrained the violinists um violin not the violists the violinists violin um to and yeah that's what happened so the players Go and interrogate that that person, but they seem to be under the same spell. He's also getting very old and stuff, and they figure out that there's a tree in the middle of uh, of of the forest, a, a little bit further from the town, who is guarding a really bad creature, a really bad thing that is really dangerous and really deadly. And this tree is guarding that. This is the tree that is guarding guarding the thing, a big gigantic tree that can talk to the players and it is but the tree is also getting older. So this Luthier was asking for um uh, wood from the tree. The tree gave that to the Luthier but the Luthier never came back which wasn't part of their deal. So the tree kind of put a spell on the Luthier and everybody who played on an instrument of that wood, right? Basically, right? So that is uh, kind of what happened and it is up to the players to um, kind of figure out a way how to deal with this because the tree, um, they want to lift the, the curse. They want to get those old people young again, but they also uh, want to not release this beast so the tree can die because if the tree dies this beast is unleashed so this at first glance is like oh pretty little flower with a lot of legs and stuff and it's being held by some but here's a humanoid by the way so just to show you how big it is it is a gigantic enormous gargantuan worm type creature that lives on the ground and this tree is guarding it so that is just to give you a a feeling a cool feeling of what one adventure could be like in Old Gods of Appalachia. And that is basically me giving you a general idea of what the uh, region of uh, Appalachia is. And for me, to my opinion, a perfect place to start, which is the starting adventure in this book. Because it zooms into a smaller town with a few NPCs and a few places of interest, making you not overwhelmed as a game master and as a player of Old Gods of Appalachia. If you want me to cover more Old Gods of Appalachia, make sure to hit the thumbs up, consider subscribing and put in the comments what you want me to cover about Old Gods of Appalachia. And until next video, bye bye.